You might be wondering why I have a bowl and a plate and two spoons is because I'm here today to introduce you to the next person who's gonna be showing you how to make the Thai uh, red chicken curry. Um, you might know her as the biggest superstar in the Philippines. She's known as the princess of all media. She's not here today. When you think of curry, me, I tend to gravitate towards Thailand and India. I feel like they're the most popular nations where curry is really ingrained in their everyday kind of life and culture. Um, but when you look hard enough, you'll find it, you'll find curry in Japan, you'll find curry in Malaysia, you'll find styles of curries in the south of the Philippines even. Um, the tikka masala that you'll have in Britain, in the UK, is an authentic curry because it's been there for a long, long time, but it's completely different from the tikka masala that you might find in India. So curry is just an amazing type of dish because it's basically protein or vegetables cooked down with kind of like a gravy-like consistency that usually has spices or aromatics or whatever the local ingredients available are. Today I'm going to be showing you the two dishes that when I think of curry uh, really come to mind. The first is an Indian butter chicken. It's one of my wife's absolute favorite dishes. It's a milder Indian curry, not too spicy. You can really control the level of spice in there. And then the second will be a Thai style red chicken curry. Now the main difference between an Indian curry and a Thai curry is that an Indian curry will use a lot of dried spices to really bring up the flavor of the dish. Whereas a Thai one will be using things like fresh ingredients like um, kaffir lime leaves, um, ginger, garlic, lemongrass, galangal, all these different things that really kind of um, make you think more of Thailand. Whereas India, it's more in the dry spices. So let's get cooking with the butter chicken. First thing we want to do is we're going to marinate our um, chicken. So I'm using some chicken thighs, uh, skinless. So I'm just going to cut up some ginger. I'm going to do the same thing with some garlic. So ginger, garlic, all goes in with our chicken thighs. To this, we're going to be adding some very standard Indian ingredients. So I've got half a cup of yogurt, some salt. I'm not going to use too much. A nice pinch. You don't want to over salt it at this point. We're then gonna add some garam masala, some turmeric powder, some ground cumin, and then some red chili powder. I also like adding some pepper to my marinade. Mix all this together, and that's gonna chill in the fridge, like I said, overnight, or for at least 30 minutes an hour. Now that that's marinating, we're gonna start making that sauce. That sauce is where all the flavor comes in. Um, in terms of what we're gonna be frying up, and you're gonna see how different this is from the Thai version. So the Thai version, you're gonna be doing tons of chopping and blending and all that stuff. Um, so it's a bit more kind of like intense and in work uh, because of the ingredients that they use. In Indian curries, because it's already dried up spices, the flavor is much easier to add. And we're just gonna add some very simple things like garlic, ginger, and onions. So I'm gonna mince up some garlic. Just start off with a little bit of oil and a little bit of butter. Obviously, you can use some ghee here. Um, I'm gonna be using half and half, so a little bit of olive oil and a little bit, like two tablespoons of butter. Onions and garlic go in until nice and soft. We're actually not looking for much color here. We just want to get it soft. So about six minutes on medium low heat should be perfect. Same with the ginger, nice and thin, and then thinly minced. Once your onions start releasing all that aroma, all you have to do now is start adding your spices. So very simple, same ingredients that we used in the chicken marinade. Garam masala, turmeric powder, got some ground cumin powder, some ground coriander seeds, and some chili powder. Chili powder you can always add more of later. So this is just gonna cook out for about two minutes. But you can already see that this just has so much intense flavor to it. So once everything's soft and you got all those smells coming up, then we can go ahead and add in our tomatoes. So we're using some crushed tomatoes here. It's literally just tomatoes that have been crushed. Um, you can also use some whole canned tomatoes. So this we're gonna cook down for about 10 to 15 minutes. 
You'll see that it's really gotten nice and thick and has an oil sheen to it, so we're good to go. I have another pan out here, a little hot, and we're gonna go ahead and add a tiny bit of olive oil to it. So we're gonna cut the chicken in cubes. That's good, and this is gonna be really hot. So again here, maybe three minutes in total. All right, so we blended the sauce. We thinned it out a little bit with evaporated milk. You can also use some water if you want. Um, then we added the sauce back into the chicken pan because the chicken pan for me is where most of the flavor is because it really cooked down and got all that fat from the chicken. And now we're gonna add the final touches and seasoning. So uh, we haven't added much salt. If you've paid attention, and I hope you have, um, only salt we've added was during the marinade. Um, so I'm gonna add a nice pinch of salt here. Very different from a Thai um, curry where you'd usually use some kind of fish sauce and instead of cream, you'd use some coconut cream or coconut milk. Uh, we're gonna add one more tablespoon of butter to finish. Some brown sugar or white sugar. Add maybe like one teaspoon. And then now, just for a little hint of it's a back flavor that you don't really kind of, if I tasted this by itself, I don't get much flavor. Once it heats up and cooks down a little bit, fenugreek really has a nice little taste um, that finishes up the dish perfectly. So by now you'll see I'm on very low heat because um, I don't want the cream to split. Oh, I wish you could taste that. This is a proper butter chicken. Um, I give you Chef Martin. <laughs> he raps, so let's give him a, like a. That's all I do. <laughs> Hi, I'm Martin, and I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Martin is the food editor over here at the Fat Kid Inside, um, and he has a new show coming out called Mashups, where he takes two really cool things yeah. and you put them together in recipes. Let's welcome the Fat Kid outside. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you're going to be seeing Martin a lot more on the channel uh, with this show and other shows. People have noticed on Facebook that some of the videos aren't my hands and they got really pissed off. They thought we were tricking them. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> we're not pretending that it's me, clearly. Tattoos, yeah. no tattoos. So Martin's been the one doing those cool, awesome videos and now he's going to be on here on YouTube as well, which is pretty exciting. Go with the time, guys. Go with the time. I'm sad there's no like, rice. No rice. That's the number one comment when I make curries and stuff. People say, where's the rice? How's that? It's very good. Very rich and creamy. The combination of spices are really great. And I really need rice. See, Maybe now now that we have someone else here, you can actually believe me when I say the food is good. Because that's one of the things, is if you say something like, the food's delicious, a lot of people won't believe you. <laughs> um, so it's good that we're both here together. So Martin is going to show us how to do the Thai, Thai red, red curry. chicken. Uh, Thai red chicken curry, correct. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna leave him to it. I'm gonna go. Um, again, like I said in the beginning, stay tuned for a lot of changes, a lot of cool and exciting new shows rolling out, especially Martin's mashups. Yeah. The first step natin is uh, called the Thai curry paste. You can actually buy this among specialty stores, pero iba talaga yung lasa if you make it from scratch. I'm using just the white part. Red onion. Usually, ginagamit nila here is shallots. It's like the smaller version. Nakikita niya siya sa mga grocery stores or supermarkets. Right, next. Itong ingredient na to, it's not super rare, but it might take some effort to find. These are the dried red chilies. And pag ganito yung dried chilies na nakuha nyo, Thai, it's gonna be super spicy. The recipe calls for like 16 pieces. So kung gagamit kayo ng Thai, probably make it 6 to 8 pieces na. 
then let it soak in hot water for 30 minutes. So after 30 minutes of soaking, ito na. This is our dried red chilies. Rehydrated, kind of pliable. I don't know if you can see this. Ito, I'll reserve the water. Pero kailangan pa rin natin yung water later kasi again, we're making a paste. So here's our rehydrated chilies. Tapos ito yung tsaan natin. <laughs> uh, we're gonna use this for the paste later. And now comes the fun part. So now it's time to blend. I'm just gonna add in the chopped coriander and lemongrass, garlic, and my rehydrated chilies here. Onions, or red onions. Now it's time for the bagoong shrimp paste. Now it's time for the dried ground cumin and ground coriander. This is called the galanggal paste, but if you don't have this, you can always just go for ginger. Gumamit lang kayo ng ginger, same amount, pero it would be better if you use the zest of one lime or dayak. Okay. I'll put it in. So I'm gonna start myself off with just one fourth cup. Yeah. Yeah. If you wanna taste it at, at this point, go ahead, pero wala siyang lasa. Pero meron lang siyang ang hang. I'm gonna put my oil here. I'm gonna cut my chicken into, chicken thigh by the way, into chunks. So in half. So lang nating mag brown siya, then we'll remove it. Then we'll let it cook in the curry. So this is a uh, kafir lime leaf. Nako contribute siya ng aroma and of course meron din siyang citrusy flavor na na impart to any dish. So you'll be able to see this in two versions in the uh, supermarket. This one is fresh, obviously, and of course meron din ng mga dried na nakalagay sa jar. Alright, so the difference will be, kunyari, right now we're using six leaves fresh. If we're using dry, we're gonna do just half. Kasi habang nadadry siya yung mga herbs natin, mas matapang siya at may delayed reaction yung paglabas ng kanyang effect. Yan. So, nag-reduce na siya by half. Kapag hindi mo dinisturb yung pan mo, magkakaroon siya ng mark sa gilid if by how much it reduced. Pero since halo ako ng halo, ain't gonna happen. Yan. Some people just dump this in, pero ako hindi. So what, ang mangyari kasi masyashock yung coconut milk nyo and it might curdle. Medyo hindi na maganda yung itsura niya. Masarap, pero medyo parang curdled milk. So what I do, I'm stirring. Yeah. So at least yung heat gently siya natatransfer to the coconut milk. We are almost done. Nilagay ko na yung sitaw. I'm gonna let it simmer for a minute, then turn off heat. I have here some Thai basil. Chop it into strips. So I added some lime juice to it. You can add more if you want. It's very good. A bit spicy for me, but very good. It just melted into one perfect dish. Again, parang yung kaninan dish ni Erwan. Yes, uh, this will be super good with rice, or even if you have like flatbread around. So yeah, that's it for the last last dish. Erwan, Erwan.